I'm David Tillman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about vitamin B1 or thiamine as a nootropic. What it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Vitamin B1 or thiamine is the first of the B complex vitamins identified and designated as B1 as a result. Japanese researchers were the first to determine that something was missing in the diet of those who ate only polished rice. Polished rice is one of the first processed foods, and of course there were problems right from the start. The bran coating on rice kernels contained what was later identified as thiamine, or what we now know as vitamin B1. The Japanese population were severely thiamine deficient on this rice-only diet. Large numbers of the population were suffering from beriberi, a central nervous system disorder caused by lack of thiamine. Once scientists determined it was thiamine that was behind this major countrywide health crisis, they went on to develop salbutamine. It was better absorbed by the brain than standard thiamine. Now your body does not produce thiamine on its own, so you must get it from food, including beef, brewer's yeast, uh, legumes like beans and lentils, milk, nuts, oats, uh, oranges, pork, rice, seeds, wheat, whole grain cereals, and yeast. But thiamine has poor bioavailability when taken as a nootropic supplement. A derivative of thiamine called salbutamine is a fat-soluble compound that is easily digested and readily crosses the blood-brain barrier. Salbutamine is a synthetic version of vitamin B1. It is two B1 molecules chemically bonded together. Thiamine is water-soluble and does not easily cross the blood-brain barrier. Salbutamine is a fat-soluble compound that easily crosses this barrier. Salbutamine functions in the body just like thiamine, but because it's more bioavailable, it's more effective than thiamine. Well, first, thiamine increases levels of thiamine pyrophosphate, or TPP. TPP is directly involved in the citric acid, or Krebs cycle, in the brain. This cycle breaks fatty acids, amino acids, and monosaccharides into smaller molecules that produce adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, energy for your mitochondria, and provide the building blocks of the molecules needed to produce brain cells. A deficiency of TPP can eventually show up as Wernicke encephalopathy, um, or Korsakoff syndrome. Now, in our society, this syndrome is typically caused by chronic alcoholism, but it can also occur after obesity or bariatric surgery, Crohn's disease, anorexia, diabetes, and if you're on kidney dialysis. Symptoms of wernicke korsakoff syndrome include confusion, inability to form memories, loss of memories and muscle coordination, confabulation, which is making up stories, and vision changes, and can ultimately and very rapidly lead to coma and death. Now, less severe cases of thiamine deficiency include fatigue, weight loss, irritability, and confusion. And the second way, thiamine also contributes to the production of the enzyme PDH, which is essential for making the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, and for the synthesis of myelin, which forms the, the sheath around the axons of neurons, ensuring that these neurons can conduct electrical signals. The citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, and enzyme AKGDH play a role in maintaining optimal levels of the neurotransmitters glutamate and GABA. And when thiamine levels decrease, the activity of these enzymes are reduced. Thiamine occurs in your body as free thiamine and various phosphorylated forms including thiamine monophosphate, or TMP, thiamine triphosphate, or TTP, and thiamine pyrophosphate, or TP, TPP, which is also known as thiamine diphosphate. The synthesis of TPP from free thiamine requires magnesium, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, and the enzyme thiamine 
pyrophosphate tinase. TPP is required for the metabolism of carbohydrates and branched-chain amino acids. Thiamine is directly involved in the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle, that provides adenosine triphosphate energy for mitochondria. Thiamine also plays a role in maintaining optimal levels of the neurotransmitters glutamate and GABA and contributing to the production of the enzyme PDH, which is essential for making the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Thiamine will boost cognition, memory, and decision-making, and provides very effective anxiolytic or antidepressant qualities. Thiamine is water-soluble and has been shown to improve glutamate and GABA neurological transmissions. If you are perfectly healthy and you don't have a thiamine deficiency, it's not likely that you'll feel anything after supplementing with thiamine. But I've come across study after study and reports on forums where lab tests showed thiamine and thiamine triphosphate within range, and yet people were dealing with mild thiamine deficiency. The problem is th mild thiamine deficiency can turn your world upside down. If you are hypothyroid or deal dealing with Hashimoto's, there is a very good chance that you would benefit from thiamine supplementation. The same with diabetes, fibromyalgia, and inflammatory bowel disease. Neurohackers report that supplementing with thiamine is an effective mosquito repellent. And I find that personally it helps. When everybody else is getting bitten by mosquitoes, I'm using cell beauty mean every day and I do not get bit by mosquitoes. Now, many report that thiamine supplementation boosts attention, energy, and motivation, a reduction in brain fog, and increased mental clarity with less anxiety. Those dealing with fibromyalgia and nerve pain report a significant decrease in pain levels. Now, most of the research conducted on vitamin B1 has been done with people dealing with fatigue or pain associated with fibromyalgia, thyroid disease, and other debilitating conditions, and most have very few participants. But the results in every trial that I found are profound. If you want to see details of these studies, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for thiamine or click on the link below this video. I've got one on how thiamine improves the symptoms of fibromyalgia. I've got another study on thiamine for chronic fatigue syndrome. And I've got another study for thiamine and Hashimoto's. So to see these studies, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for thiamine. The recommended dosage of vitamin B1 or thiamine according to the American FDA is 1.2 milligrams a day. Pregnant and breastfeeding women is a whopping four milligrams per day. Now, many neurohackers would laugh at these recommendations. Mild thiamine deficiency affects a significant segment of the population in any country. Most clinical studies on thiamine doses, uh, using thiamine doses range from 300 all the way up to 1800 milligrams a day. The bottom line is that thiamine dosing is completely up to you. And the side effects, and there's uh, very little side effects or no side effects reported even at high doses. Now, the Mayo Clinic recommends for menstrual cramps 100 milligrams a day, epilepsy 50 milligrams, alcoholic liver disease and withdrawal, 100 milligrams of the injection, um, by injection of thiamine hydrochloride, for coma or hypothermia, 100 milligram injections. Thiamine deficiency due to nutrition, 100 milligram injections. And for Wernicke Korsakoff syndrome, 5 to 200 milligram injections. Some natural health uh, clinics offer very expensive thiamine therapy intravenously, and doses are usually uh, 25 to 50 milligrams a session. Thiamine is non-toxic, so is considered well-tolerated and safe. Side effects are rare, and very high doses can include upset stomach. If you are taking digoxin, 
diuretics or dilantin, you should consult with your doctor before supplementing with thiamine. Thiamine hydrochloride, or HCI, is um, most vitamin B1 or thiamine supplements available from online retailers and vitamin shops come as thiamine hydrochloride and come in 50 to 500 milligram tablets or capsules. Benfotiamine is a synthetic acyl derivative of thiamine and it's a fat soluble form of thiamine that is much more bioavailable than HCI. Benfotiamine typically comes in 150 to 250 milligram capsules. Dosage is up to 900 milligrams a day. And then there's tetrahydrofurfuryl sulfide, or TTFD, um, also known as fur saltivine. Uh, TTFD is a disulfide derivative of thiamine developed in Japan for treating beriberi. It's a synthetic form of thiamine that naturally occurs in garlic. TTFD is a form of thiamine that is water-soluble and much more difficult to find in vitamin shops. Brand names include um, names like uh, lipothiamine, adventin, um, banlipoid, and judalor. TTFD comes in 50 milligram capsules and the primary side effect of using it is that you smell like garlic after taking it. And then we have my preferred form, salbutamine. Salbutamine is sold for cognitive enhancement. It's in a tablet, capsule, and powder form. I buy it in powder form and I make my own capsules. Tablets and capsules ready made are usually 750 milligrams each. Salbutamine is a synthetic version of thiamine. It's just two thiamine molecules bound together. It's sold as a prescription medication in some countries under brand names like Arcalion, um, Bisabutithiamine, and a couple of other names. So my nootropics expert recommendation for vitamin B1 or thiamine is 50 to 100 milligrams per day. And that's my report on vitamin B1. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for vitamin B1 or thiamine or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video and you'll find dozens of articles and all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. And if you have any questions or you want to share your experience using either thiamine or salbutamine, please use the comment section at the bottom of the post on Nootropics Expert. I respond to comments and questions at Nootropics Expert usually the same day. And if you want to see more videos and all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.